Hi, this is Jane Hopper with Stitch by Stitch Custom Quilting. If you're watching this video, it's more than likely that you purchased one of my free motion quilting practice panels. They come in white or in black. And the great thing about these is that the, the lines on the fabric are water soluble. So you can practice stitching over them and when you're finished practicing, you can soak it in water and those lines go away and it looks like you quilted it all by yourself. So the other thing that you can do with this is you can use water soluble thread in the bobbin. So when you make your fabric sandwich, you have the water soluble thread in the bobbin and you go ahead and you stitch these out. And then um, after you're done, you can flip it over and spritz that with water and that bobbin thread goes away and then you can pull your top thread out and you can go ahead and practice stitching all over again. There is another YouTube video on that, so be sure to, to hop over to that one and, and check that out on how that works. So here's the panel. You can also, on my website, download an instruction sheet that has arrows and telling you the ways to go. But what I'd like to do today is I'm going to do a video so that, and we're gonna go over each of these designs so you can see exactly the stitch path and how it's quilted out. Um, here is a, here is one that's already quilted out and this one is in black. So you can see there. So lots of great designs there, lots of good practice and it's a great way to practice your free motion skills before actually putting them on um, your own quilts. The other nice thing about this is, yes, this is about fat quarter size. They're about 20 by 20, um, and you can use it on your domestic machine, your stationary long arm, or your stand-up long arm, movable machine long arm. So it works on any of those machines, and it's a great way to practice. So let's get started. We'll start with the different designs. Okay, so if you're on a domestic or a stationary long arm, um, you're going to go ahead and sandwich your quilt top, top, batting, and backing. And then you're gonna baste in your favorite basting method. So the other thing that are good tools to have are some kind of item that is going to help you grip the fabric better. <clears throat> My favorites are machine girl gloves. Machine girl gloves are nice and breathable and they feel light and they have these rubberized tips that are great to make good contact with your fabric sandwich. The other item is the HQ Sweet Spots that I really like. They also have a, um, a pad here that helps you grip the fabric and move the fabric along because you don't want to be fighting with your fabric all the time. It's better to have something that's going to grip it really well. Okay, so let's get started. So the first design we're going to start with is the swirl in the center. Um, and on, let me draw that for you because I like to doodle first so you can see. So you're going to go in and go back out and branch off and go in and go back to about the same place. You're trying to keep the distance about the same. So in, out, and if I wanted to get back around here, I'm just going to echo again to get me back around. Okay. Let's go stitch that out. So I've gone ahead and done my lock, my locking stitch at the beginning. I'll trim this tail as we go along. If you need to see a video on starting and stopping and um, how I do that, there is a video on my uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so here we go.
Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. As you can see, I didn't stay on the lines very well, but that's okay. Those lines are just there as suggestions. Remember, those blue lines are gonna go away and nobody will even know. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish quilting this, this section out for you. Okay, we got that all quilted out. So this is a paisley design. We're gonna go ahead and move right on with that. Um, I'm gonna draw it out first so you can see what that looks like. So a paisley for me is kind of a little curve there and back around. So you're doing that initial curve and I have to really make myself do it I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a really good paisley person. So you just go ahead and follow that path and let's go ahead and stitch that out. Take notice that anytime I'm coming to a point, whether it be in any in any of the designs, that you want to just pause, hesitate for a minute so that that needle has a chance to go up and down a couple times to lock in that point. Okay, we got the paisley done. 
Now we're going to move on to the leaf design. For the leaf design, we're just going to do something like this. So you're going to do a little leaf and then you're going to echo that back around and then you can branch off and do another one. Kind of like that. So let's get started quilting that one. We got the leaves done. Now we're going to move on to the clamshell. The clamshell is just kind of a, a, a C. So it's a C and back.
Okay, so there you have four great fill designs or edge to edge designs and that you've now quilted out and just by following the lines. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to some of the border and sashing designs and some of the cornerstone designs. Let's go ahead and move on to E's and L's. E's and L's are just that, it's like cursive writing. So you're gonna go E, L, E, L, E, O. So watch how I stitch it out. pretty easy, pretty fun design. So we're going to move on to this cornerstone right here. So I call this the kite. And the way that I do the kite is if I have a block, I am going to start here and maybe I'm going to mark a dot on the inside corner of each of those areas. Then I'm going to do a straight line and if I look ahead to where I'm going it's easier to do a straight line than if I'm looking right at, right at the needle. So I'm going to go straight line from here to here to dot to dot and back again and then I'm going to echo that inside. It's a pretty fun easy design. Pretty simple, isn't it? The next one we'll do is this one. It's called the wishbone. So for the wishbone, it's basically you start down here, you go up at an angled line and you circle back. So down, circle back, and you keep on going like that. And you can do them as close together as you want or as wide as you want. need to reposition your hands just stop with the needle down and reposition your hands have another kite so we're going to go ahead and do that one too. Okay so there's those two. The next design is ribbon candy and you're basically going to just follow the lines you want the you want to try and have them touching but they don't have to down at like the top third and the bottom third. I do have 10 ways to ribbon candy as a YouTube tutorial so please go out there and watch that because that gives you lots of tips and tricks and things to do for that. 
So the next one we're going to do, it's a ribbon candy, but it's an overlapping ribbon candy where you go over, you do your ribbon candy, you come down, and then you come back over that first one and grab it. And you keep on doing that. I like to do this one a lot because I think it adds a little bit more texture. we've done the first row of borders and some cornerstones. Now we'll move on to the outer section. Okay, so with the swirl and doing it in a long row, the, the, the key to that is to come in to the point, come back out about to almost where you started, and then you can come back around and you can turn that swirl in the opposite direction. So if you come back and then move on. So watch me go ahead and stitch that out.
we did the swirl. Now we're going to move on to a six pointed or a eight pointed star. So you'll see the star here. So let me show you over here how we're going to achieve that. So here's our square, and we'll mark the center of each of the sides. So we're going to pick a corner to start in. Say we start here. So we're going to do a straight line from here to that, that center and then back to the corner. And now we're here. We're going to go up to that center mark and back down. And then this center mark and over to that corner. And then that center mark and bring it back up to there. So it's pretty easy once you understand the path. So let's go ahead and stitch that out. Looks pretty good. Okay, so stitching out the leaf pattern. You're going to do something like this. You're going to go stitch like that, and then you're going to twist it to the other direction and continue on like that. I like to rotate my leaves going from one side of the stem to the other. Okay, let's, you can watch how I stitch these out. Do the swirl. So this is a standard swirl where we would come into a point, but instead of just coming straight back out, we're doing a little, just coming over a little bit to make it look like ribbon, and then we're crossing over that previously stitched line. So watch how it goes, and it creates this sort of ribbon design here. So we're going to come in. To our standard point then we're going to shift over a little bit and then we're going to come back out and it looks it makes up for a really nice design so i call this design an orange peel daisy and there are several different ways that you can do this but basically what I would do if I was working on a blank block is I would mark the crosshairs this way and a registration line across diagonally each way. And then I would also make sure that the center is lined up the way I want it to line up. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to do, I'm gonna do it like this. So it's basically big orange peels. There you 
you go. So you might notice on this design, it doesn't cross it over anywhere. So how am I getting both sides? Actually, what I'm doing is I'm going across with one design, and then I'm going to work my way back with this on the design that's on the flip side of it so that it helps to fill in that space some. So let's go ahead and I'll stitch that out for you. So I'm doing a basic swirl and then I'm just sort of doing a long tail and doing another swirl. Okay, so I have two choices now. I can either break my thread and go back to the very beginning and do the second pass, but I, I find it easier to go backwards. So I'm gonna just, echo, I'm gonna travel down a little bit and then I'm gonna come back. got all that done and it looks pretty good. This design here is what I call a hooked swirl. So the way I do that is I come in like I'm going to do a swirl and then on the way back out I go up and make a hook. And what I like about that is you can direct that hook wherever you want it to go. So let's go ahead and stitch that out. Another fun one to do it's kind of like the um, brackets that we used to use in math um, the only thing that sometimes I like to do so that I can make sure that the points are all equally spaced on each side is that I like to find the middle of each side and draw a registration line across there so that I can make sure to that point hits on that registration line to make sure that they all look like they're pretty uniform that one. This next one 
I call it a daisy orange peel, can be a little tricky. So I thought it would be helpful if I showed you how that one works on here. So if we have our square, this one we're gonna start in the middle. And sometimes it helps to draw crosshairs if that helps you out. So we're gonna take it like this. We're gonna do we're gonna do that sort of like a wishbone. We're gonna come back, but as we come back, we're gonna branch off up here and do a kind of a figure eight and take it back down. So watch that path again. There you go. It is a cute little design and works really well. Let's go ahead and stitch that out. I would just break my thread and get back out. So, so far we've covered edge to edge designs in the middle. We've done some sashing designs. Um, we've done some block designs or some cornerstone designs. And now we're going to do some designs that fit into triangles. And so that way you have a little bit of everything for a quilt that you're going to quilt. For this one, this is sort of like a fan design. I usually go out and I stitch the, the center one first. And then I come in and fill in each side. So that's number one. For this next area, this next triangle, I would mark the center right here with some kind of a marking utensil, the middle of the long edge of the triangle. And then we're gonna just do orange peels, but it's how we're doing the orange peels. So watch how it works. So we're gonna do an orange peel from corner. Corner. From the corner to the marking, from the marking back to the corner, and then from corner to corner. And that can be a really nice design. So let's move on. So this one I just filled in with E's and L's, except for I, I graduated them up and back down to fit into the triangle. And the same thing goes for this next one. I did a wishbone, but I graduated it up and down.
need one of those fans in this corner. Here we have a triangle where we're going to do the fan, but we're going to put four of them in. So I just usually start on one side and I follow the triangle. Last but not least is this cute little design. Really, you can do three leaves, three teardrops, whatever you want. But what I do is I do the middle one first. And then I add that little vein in there. And there you have it. Well, I hope you like this panel and I hope you enjoy quilting it. Um, I would love to see how everybody got theirs done or what they did anything different because feel free to change designs up if you want. You don't have to do them the way they're they're printed on here. The other thing is, is if you have if you struggle with these designs, I do have some workbooks. This is just an example of one of the workbooks that I have. It is a free motion quilting design workbook. This one happens to be the continuing your journey, which is about an intermediate. But inside, let me just show you real quick. So each design page has a clear plastic overlay. So what you can do is you can take your dry erase marker, and I give you one when you order some of my books, and you can just follow the arrows and, and do your designs that way. And then, so you can see how it would work. So it's a great way for to, to gain your muscle memory, great, great, great way to learn designs and that way, and it's a help for you. That was my goal in all this, is to give everybody um, some stepping stones and some help with their free motion quilting. And you can see in this, in this book, there's lots of different designs. There's edge to edge designs, there's designs for blocks and for triangles and for sashings and borders. So there are five different books. There is a, I'll put a picture of the books up on the screen for you. There's a beginner, intermediate, advanced, feathers, and a one called element of change. Along with, I also have a couple different variety or several different varieties of free motion quilting panels. So feel free to check them out. And I'll put the link to my website down in the description so that you can get there if you need to see what I have to offer. Thanks again for watching. I wish you all the best and happy quilting.